Thanks for checking out this movie review. Um, I can't tell if this is a show or a movie, but anyways, we're going to be talking about Blood Machines. It's a 2019 release, and the reason I say I can't tell if it's a movie or a show, it feels like a movie. It's one cohesive thing, but it's broken up into three episodes, basically, but I think it's just basically one movie broken up into three episodes. It totals 50 minutes, and this is a Shudder original. Uh, I've been doing all these Shudder original reviews, so thank you very much to Shudder for sending me screeners ahead of time. When I am putting this out right now, it comes out uh, Thursday, May 21st on Shudder streaming service, so I'm putting this review out early. So therefore, this is a no-spoilers review because I don't want to spoil anything for anyone, and I would say watch this film. Definitely watch this film. But you can continue with this video and there won't be spoilers, so you, you'll be all right. Thematically, maybe a little bit, but that's actually not that important to it. Um, but anyway, let's talk a little bit about this. Blood Machines, written and directed by Raphael, Raphael Hernandez and Savitri Jolie Gonford, uh, who did another film called Kedara. Now, it was confusing to me because I was doing my research and I found their names as the writer-directors of this. And then when I was watching the credits for the film, the show film, uh, it said written and directed by Seth Ickerman. And I'm like, wait, what? So I did a little research and come to find out these two individuals work together under the pseudonym Seth Ickerman. Now, why that is, I don't really know. I guess maybe it's kind of to symbolize that uh, they kind of work so well together that they basically become one person. They're their own individual people, but when they come together, they are Seth Ickerman. It's kind of like Voltron or something, you know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so this is, um, the, you know, they're calling this a cosmic opera is what they're saying. And the the information that was sent to me from Shudder, it said a, a experience. They called this film an experience. And I understand why. And I understand why it's called an experience. I understand why it's a cosmic opera because it is very heavily music driven now the music is the music of uh, an individual i didn't know about until this so i'm very thankful that i know about this now carpenter brute now he's a synth wave uh, musical artist from france who like i said i had no idea about but his music is really good and it works unbelievably well with this film which you know it has to because this is basically all framed around that music in fact this film is a follow-up to a music video that uh, Seth Ickerman did for uh, Carpenter Brute. Now, the music video you can check out. I watched it. It's called Turbo Killer. You can just find it on YouTube. Just put in Turbo Killer uh, music video uh, or Turbo Killer Carpenter Brute. But it's when you watch that and then you watch the film, a lot of the same imagery in it, the effects, they look the same. The CG looks the same. A lot of the stuff looks the same. So you can see how Blood Machines is a follow-up to Turbo Killer. So I would say go ahead and watch Turbo Killer, but I would say watch it after Blood Machines because it feels better that way. Unless you're looking for more of the one-upsmanship of the visuals because the visuals in Blood Machines is a bit better than the visuals in Turbo Killer, although they're both very, very good. So kind of take your pick. You know, Do you want to watch Turbo Killer and then see even better visuals of Blood Machines, or do you want to watch Blood Machines because it feels to me like that stands on its own, and then see Turbo Killer and see where this all originated, especially the relationship between Seth Ickerman and uh, Carpenter Brute. But the music, the synthwave music by Carpenter Brute is really good. Now, a little bit of information on Car Carpenter Brute a little bit, like his music. He mixes sounds from horror films, metal, rock, and electronic music to get his sound. And it works really well, especially for film. Like, I want him to continue working in film. I also would like to see more music videos by Carpenter Brute with Seth Ickerman directing. Yes, please. Now, Blood Machines was actually funded through Kickstarter, which is interesting, and they got lots of euros. I don't, <laughs> I don't know the conversion. You can look it up if you if you know those conversions. Um, yeah. So they said that the film was actually inspired by uh, the music of Carpenter Brute, obviously, and '80s films. And like I said, they're calling it a cosmic opera, and you will see why when you watch it. It's cosmic. It's in space, and it's very operatic because it's very musically driven. Uh, overall, it's 50 minutes 
uh, broken up amongst three episodes. I don't think that they had to break it up into episodes, but the fact that they did isn't that big of a deal either, so you could kind of consume it in parts if you want to, but, you know, I'm sure, especially now, everyone has 50 minutes to put into it, and I would recommend that. Um, so immediately this thing looks amazing. Yes, the visuals are what this is all about. The visuals and the music and both those things are outstandingly well done. Outstandingly well done. The CG in this is ridiculous and the use of color is beautiful. Uh, and the color combinations that they use are just very, very pleasing. I would say that uh, people out there who talk a lot about the film Mandy and the visuals for that film, you will probably really enjoy this. I'm not a horror film or, well, film in general viewer who's all into just visuals and, you know, don't really care about story that much. I really look for a lot of story and a good script and good characters and all that stuff. So this film lacks a lot of character development. It has one-dimensional characters. Uh, the dialogue's not that good. There isn't a whole lot of a story to it. There is some, but it's very simplistic. So what it boils down to is this is all about visuals. It's all about the music, uh, and script is very much script and story are very much secondary, or tertiary or quadriary. I don't know. Um, if you're looking for a good story film that goes places, this is not that. Like it's not that. If you're looking for a really cool visual experience for 50 minutes, this is that. Now. Like I said, I'm not that type of person who typically for film looks for just a visual experience, but I have to admit I really enjoyed the visual experience of this. Uh, it does bother me a little bit that there's there isn't more substance to it, but like I understand going into it the way it's set up that it's all about the visuals and the music, and that ends up being fine to me. You know, it's weird because like I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of Mandy because of how it is, but I think the biggest difference between these two is a I think uh, Blood Machines has better visuals than Mandy, in my opinion. Just saying. And B, it's 50 minutes with a light script as opposed to Mandy, which is two hours with a light script. I can't take two hours with a light script and good visuals. I can take 50 minutes for sure with a light script and even better visuals. So that's kind of where the difference is for me. The set design and props for Blood Machines are really good too. There's so much detail. Like... And that's the thing, like, it moves relatively slow, story-wise, story-wise, but it's um, it's so visually appealing. And it's not just the way the cinematography and the directing looks, which is unbelievably good, but it's, like I said, the CG looks amazing, the use of colors looks so good. But even when you're not looking at that, you're looking at the props, you're looking at the set design, because there's so much detail. It's all about detail in this with the visuals, so much detail. And it feels like it's all about detail with the music as well. The way Carpenter Brute puts his music together, very detail-oriented. Like I said, directing and cinematography is really, really, really good. Um, there's some really interesting angles in this and really cool perspective shots in this. Uh, yeah, the uh, Seth Ekerman really knows cinematography, really knows directing. It's awesome. Um, there's a lot of extra detail added. Like I was saying, there was a lot of cool detail. One really good, um, well, there are two really good examples. So there's like this kind of like energy plasma gun thing, cause it's like in space and it, it has, it puts off a lot of heat. So they even put in the detail of having, you know how, when there's a lot of heat, there's like a visual, um, warping of how you see things. Uh, yeah, so they have that coming out of the gun, which, you know, they didn't need to do that, but that's a really cool detail, and it looks really good. There's also a moment with the same gun where it's got, like, this green kind of plasma oozing out of the end, and it's, like, neon. It looks visually amazing, and once again, it's just, like, one of these very small details, but it looks so good. I love it. The acting in this is not the best. That's another thing to throw out there. Um, in addition to the, the dialogue not being that great and the script in general not being very good, the acting is not that great. Um, it's not terrible, but it's not good either. So just know that. But, you know, once again, it's about the visuals. It's about the music, and that's okay. The film keeps you engaged, engaged surely with, uh, surely, I'm sorry, surely with the visuals 
And part of that being is you just want to know where they go next with the visuals because they keep throwing things at you. They're not just showing you the same shots and the same colors and the same sets and props and um, angles and, you know, CG. They're not showing you the same thing over and over and over again. You know, those things keep coming back, but it just keeps looking like new, 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 new all the time. And that's what keeps you engaged. Uh once again, the music is the, is so good. The best parts of it are the musical montages that they have because then it, it's kind of harkening back to the whole music video ordeal, and that's when it feels best, in my opinion, and looks best. The visual representation of space in this is unbelievably stunning, uh, especially their color usage within space, the design of it, but the color usage in, uh, in, um, in concert with the design of it, so good. There is nudity in this, but it's interesting because the nudity doesn't at all feel sexual. It feels more just like raw and natural, and it goes with the, you know, story, the little bit of story there is. It, it goes along with it in not being sexual and actually being an important part of the story. I didn't find myself looking at it and being like, oh, nudity. I f found myself just looking at it and, like, not really even seeing it, to be honest. It just kind of, like, blends in with the film, so that was interesting. Like I said, it moves slowly, which would be a real killer for a film, but it looks unbelievably good. So you kind of give it a pass, at least I did, which is not common for me as a, as a viewer. Um, so I really, really, really want to see what Seth Ickerman can do uh, in the future. Uh, like I said, cinematography, directing, all that stuff, so good. But I would love to see what they could do with a legitimately good script. You know, give me a really cool high concept script that needs awesome visuals and really good directing and cinematography. That's what I need. And give it to Seth Ackerman. Let's do this. Um, so the, yeah, I already talked about that one. Uh, yeah, the last thing I want to say is a kind of like a little bit of a thematic thing that I noticed in the film. Um, there seems to be an underlying theme of women coming to greater power and influence from the fall of men and the libido-driven desire to contain and control as an unchained woman feels dangerous to, men, to the men, at least in this film. So it kind of feels a little bit to me like it could be this kind of veiled um, me metaphor for women rising to more power over men because of you know, men kind of looking at them as as objects, as kind of alien in a sense, and not treating them as as human beings, as as equals. And then, you know, the tables end up turning. And then, what situation do you find yourself in? At that point, you then think, "Man, I wish I would have uh, treated people a little bit nicer when they're above me, as opposed to being below me." Um, which is, you know, what this says. Uh, so it's it's interesting to look at it from that viewpoint, but. It's just interesting to look at as I've been kind of hammering home on this. Okay, so um, I'm very, very interested to, to hear what people's thoughts on this film are. So really put comments down there when you do see it. Whether you've seen it before watching this or after watching this, come and make these comments. Um, so my rating, so usually I would dock a film like this a lot more because of the script and the characters and the acting and all that, but it makes up for a lot with the visuals and the music so and the directing and cinematography. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a very solid four stars. I would say that people should definitely check this out, even if you're just going to watch it once because you're not a, you know, um, style over substance type person. Like, you know, same for me. But, um, yeah, definitely watch it. At least give it one go. Uh, really like it. Worth watching. I'm... I, I could be tempted to watch it again, actually. Uh, that says a lot for me. So anyway, thanks for checking this out. Thank you again, Shudder, for all the screeners, especially this one, because it was an experience. I really did enjoy it. So do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button, because I'm not making money or anything doing this, and that's your way to repay me. If you like anything I do, take that quick second, hit that subscribe. And if you want to know whenever I'm putting up videos or doing live streams, make sure you hit the notification bell, because you'll find out that way. Put the comments down there. I want to talk about this for sure. If you're already subscribed, hit that like button. Just let me know you're still going with the channel. Like, you're still checking it out. But regardless, thank you for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.